Hi, I'm Tyron Wesson, you lot know me as Doomsday or Doomsday93 or whatever. Anyway, recently I've seen a bunch of video tutorials about OS mapping, like the basics, like the initial setup, the timing, etc. But I haven't seen many basic tutorials about storyboarding, well, at least no videos anyway. The only real one I've seen is one by Echo on the OS forums in a big thread outlining all the functions of the storyboard editor. And I think that's done really well, FD needs to know there and he's explained it as best as he can, I think. But I can still see people who are new to it struggling with it. They might get most of it right, but then when, when they try to use them, they might get one or two little things wrong. And they have no idea what it is, so they just get frustrated and just say, I oh, forget this, I can't do it. And give up and just get give the job to someone else, or just have a plain background or whatever. Anyway, that's why I'm doing this video, to hopefully show the people who are struggling with this, just me do messing about with it and hopefully if they can see what I'm doing they'll get the gist of it and figure out what they're doing wrong. Because really the hardest part of um, story storyboarding my scripting is getting it down the first time. Once you've got the basics down, everything else just clicks into place. It gets really easy after that. Trust me. If I can do it, you lot can. Anyway, let's go find a map. Just a basic map, I don't know. Uh, duh, duh, duh. There you go. Just, yeah, don't mind the song. It's a great song, you know, but hopefully I'll finish it one time. I really, really should. Anyway, first you go into the design tab, and you got to go load up a picture first. So sprite library in your design tab and browse. I'm going to use a picture I got earlier from after two minutes of searching on Google Images, and that's a picture of a gingerbread man, who's actually a lot bigger than I thought. I was hoping it's only a little tiny thing, but oh well, it's still usable. It's got, it's got a good pose as well, and that might come handy for later on. Anyway, once you've done that, you press file and save. And then when you do that, you go into your song folder, and you should have a little OSB file right there. Yep. That's where all your script goes, whether you be doing it manually or via the editor. The everything will go into there, so that's important. Anyway, when you got it first time, you'll need to open up with Notepad. Odds are, if you're just starting out, it's not going to be defaulted, so you right-click, open with, and Notepad. Or, or just search for it. It's not hard, really. It's not, it's not like the hardest part. Not that, not, this, not, not that this is hard anyway, you know, but whatever. Anyway, once you open it up, this is what you'll be greeted with. Or basically, shows you all the storyboard layers, the background layer, fail, pass, foreground layers. Uh, the fail and pass layer are basically what happens, what goes in there hap happens whenever you're failing on a song or passing on a song, basically. Really, the main ones are foreground and background, unless you're doing some kind of story storyboard, apart from just some effects storyboard, like a strobe light or whatever. The only ones you'll need are the foreground and background. Anyway, hopefully if you've put a picture in and done what I've done, in the foreground layer, or maybe the background layer, you'll have this. That's, that's your image. The top bit just defines what it is, like where it is, the size, what type of image, whatever. That's not important for now. We're only going to be focused on this for now. I can always go over that on another tutorial if I ever do one. So anyway, this is the main thing we're going about. This is the function. Um, obviously, I've done this because I've just moved it there, so it's created one by itself. That's not important, just delete that if you have anything there. So the main four main ones you'll be using, the ones I'll be going over now, are the move, the scale, the fade, and the rotate commands. All of them are very, very similar and very, very simple to use. Well, they're all simple, and there are others, but those are the four you'll be using the most. Oh, and the loop command as well, but I'll leave that for another tutorial if I do it. I'm just going to show the very, very basics so people can get to grips of what they're doing if they have no idea what's going on here. Anyway, I'm going to start with the one I know the most. Even though I know them all, but I'm going to go with the one I use the most, and that's the fade command. Well, first up, all all the commands in the storyboard editor are defined by a letter at the start, and it's pretty obvious what they are. M, if you put an M, it'll be move. S will be scale. F will be fade, and R will be rotate. It's not rocket science, really, what each of them are. So we're doing fade, so we're doing F. Put a comma to separate it. The next one is the easing of it, which is basically how it moves. Like, does it move at a constant speed? Does it get faster, then get slower, or whatever? There's three options you have for this. If you put a zero, that'll make it go at a constant speed. So if it's a move, it'll move at a constant speed. If it's fade, it'll fade at constant speed, whatever. It's peaceable. If you put a one, that'll make it go faster and then slower. So it'll start out really fast and then get slower. And two is the complete opposite. It starts out slower and then gets faster. We're going to have it at constant speed, so we'll put a zero, put a comma to separate that. And then the next two uh, define where it is in the song, but in the millisecond value. That's very simple to do. So the first one is where it starts, and the second one is where it ends. So basically, the millisecond value is down there. 
down there. I know. There you go. Can you see that? Zero, 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 zero. You see it? It's a bit awkward to move. I've put the window in a pretty complicated position so it doesn't move properly. Anyway, so you got put the zero there. So you put a zero there. And then the next one is where it ends. So we shall end it at uh, there. Two, two, eight, eight. So let's show that. Two, two, eight, eight. Then, then the next two is unique to the fade because this, this, the, the next two determine um, what the fade is at the start and what the fade is at the end, like how opaque it is, how invisible it is, or whatever. Just to put it in simple terms, the first one is where it, how it starts, and the second one is how it ends. And there's really, if you put a one, that'll make it completely opaque. You won't be able to see through it. And if you put a zero, that'll make it completely invisible. It'll be gone. We'll, we're gonna, what we'll do here is make it so it's completely opaque at the start and then fades out to nothing at the end. So in the first one, you'll put a one because it'll start out opaque. Then put a comma, and then the next one will be zero. So at the end of it, it'll be invisible. And that's pretty much it, really. So can, 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 cancel this or save that, and then save this. That's important. Whenever you do a storyboard, save the map first, and then save this in Notepad. Otherwise, if you're doing a massive, massive storyboard here that you've been spending hours on, and then you save this first, and then save this. You'll find that all this will be gone. You, it, will be, it will be replaced with the old one, and you're going to be kicking yourself so hard because you've just wasted hours of your life or whatever. Anyway, that's not. Anyway, it is important, but yeah, just keep that in mind. Anyway, once you've done that, and it's gone. Woo! Yeah, it's not really that exciting, is it? No. Anyway that's the fade and they're all very similar I'll just show you the scale command is pretty much the same as this except it has an R at the end and these two determine how big it that one determines how big it is at the start and how big it is at the end instead of fav fading obviously because it's um, wait not R silly me S you put an S for scale and the first one determines how big it is at the start and how that no, then the second one will determine how big it is at the end it p pretty much the same thing if you put bigger than one, it'll be bigger than the default size. If you put less than one, it'll be smaller than the default size. One is the default size of the image, by the way. I won't go over that because I don't want to go over the 15 minute limit and it's so similar to fade that it's not really important to show that one on its own. But I'll show the rotate one because there's an important thing I should go over with this one. So we do that one first. If, again, it's, the first few are the same. The first one, the, after that one, it's the easing, so we want it to go at a constant speed. So north, then to put a comma, and where it starts it ends. We'll use the same one we used last time. So starts at zero and then ends at two two eight eight. And then the next two, uh, the first one determines the rotation of it at the start, and the second one determines the rotation of it at the end. And well, it's very similar to the other two, except this one is important because you don't. It's not in degrees, it's in radians. That's radians. Radians are about, one radian is about 57 degrees. So basically, if you want to do a whole turn with this, it's pretty much well, six, six, six and a bit radians. Six radians is nearly one whole turn. So for this one, we'll make it do nearly one whole turn. I ain't going to bother doing the maths because we ain't got the time. So the first one, put a zero because we don't want it to turn at all. That'll make it like the standard rotation it's on which is straight up and the next one we'll put a 6 which will make it do nearly one whole turn and say if you put 12 it'll do nearly two whole turns you can figure that out for yourself when you have a mess about but this is just going over how it works we're not trying to do anything amazing here anyway once you've done that save this or cancel it if you haven't done anything and then save this this after this making that clear because that's quite important when you're doing that, your picture will spin nearly one whole. Well, it looks like it's spinning one hole, but you'll find it's just off. But that's important. It's it's spinning. And it's working. That's the main thing. Anyway, one more is the move command. This one's fairly simple as well, but there's a little bit more to it. So you put an M to say it's a move command. Comma. We don't want it to go at like we want it to go at a constant speed. So put a naught. And then comma. Then where it starts and ends. Same as last time put a naught and then two two eight eight and then the next we've got next ones there's next four the first two determine the x value and the y value where it starts um, the x value is how far it is along the horizontal which is here 
and Y is the how far it goes on the vertical, which is here, for those who don't know what it is, even though um, hopefully you already do, but oh well. Basically, and one thing I should go over as well is the resolution of the storyboard area. The, map, the storyboard area is 6, 640 by 480 resolution, and it starts in the top left corner. So in the top left corner, it'd be 0, 0. In the top right corner, it would be 640 by 0. In the that corner, it'd be 640 by 480. And in this corner, it would be 0 by 480. It's very simple then. Obviously, everything else falls into place. What we're going to do is basically have our man, or whatever picture you've got, start around here, around the middle left, and end around the middle right. So we start him out, since we're starting him around here, well, we're going to have an x value of about around 100, because two, yeah, uh, 320 x is there, so we're going to have 100, which is about there. So in our x value, we'll put a 100. I put a comma, and we're, we're going to have him about halfway. So uh, for the y but value will be 240, and then the next two is where he ends. We're only going to have him go to the right, so we only have to make the change the x value, which is the first one. Around there, we're about 400 x, I'd say, or 450. Let's put 450, and we're not moving him up and down, so the y value stays the same, 240, and that's it. Cancel that. Then press save right there, and then that. save that after, after, got to make that clear, and then, hopefully, if you've been following me right, you'll have something, or maybe a man, or I don't know, a car, whatever you found, and you'll skate along the stage like that. Exciting. And anyway, that's the main foil you'll be using. Of course, apart from the loop command, but if I ever do another tutorial like this, I'll go over that. I don't want to go take too long to do this, otherwise I won't be able to get it on YouTube. Anyway, hopefully this helped you out. Hopefully I did it clear enough. Um, if this did help you out, be sure to drop me a message on us or YouTube if it did. Anyway, hopefully it helped out. And this is Doomsday, signing out.